<laughs> Mr. Red here on a pretty cool Louisiana morning. Uh, yeah, temperature is going to get back up there again today onto the hundreds. But it's early right now. We um, have, a, have a little cool front that came through. So we're, we're probably in the upper 70s, maybe 80s, 81, 82. And the job that I'm getting ready to go do today is one of my favorite videos to make. Uh, it, it's one of the reasons I want to get a little bit started early today because the job is, <laughs> it does make a lot of heat. So that video that we're going to do in today, we're going to be taking our beeswax and we're going to be rendering it down. I've got all those cappings that uh, from our honey supers that we got. Got all those cappings to do. Uh, a couple of cutouts that, that I've got. Wax from the cutouts. Um, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and we're going to render all that stuff down. And as we're, as we're rendering it, as we're rendering it down, uh, I kind of, this time, I, I've never really talked about the kettle that I use in the process so I'd like to I'd like to talk about that this morning I'm trying to cut through the the woods right here and there's a lot of a lot of limbs that I got to go around so we're, we're making our way to the honey house surely I should have I, sh I guess I should have just stayed on the street but I want to walk past the, the bee boxes this morning and and check them out. So here we are, almost almost through the ravine. In fact, this this ravine right right down here, let's see, you see that right down here? When the flood came here uh, back in 2016, I must have pulled, I don't know, eight or ten boxes out of this this little gully right in here. And some of them had bees. In fact, I know the meanest bees that I had at that time, they were in, in this gully right here. And going through that flood didn't matter to them. They were still mean. And they didn't like that I was trying to help them out. <laughs> so they stayed in that ditch for two more days. But anyway, <laughs> that's a different story. I got plenty of stories. So back to what we're doing today. The rendering of beeswax and as we get closer to, to the honey house uh, in fact we may as well go ahead and um, show you right off what wax that I'm going to be using to render down we're gonna we're gonna be making two batches uh, today and it's gonna take two maybe three days to to do all of this but by the grace of God, <laughs> at the end of it, we ought to have at two really nice blocks of wax. So let's get inside the little peacock house right over there. And that's where we're, I'm going to show you the first batch of wax that we're going to look at today. As I open up our highly secured screen door. <laughs> and walk into the peacock pin. And I say a peacock pin because this is, at, at one time, that's what actually uh, this structure was used at as it, it housed, oh my goodness, when I first came in, there must have been 30 peacocks uh, living in this building. They, they roost up in the rafters up there. And then on the outside, in fact, this door right over there, they'd open that door and this area out there in fact you can see those posts that was a screened off enclosure where the birds could then also go out there and, and hang out but now i've converted this whole area into uh, storage for our woodenware and uh, these are our, our supers that are just staying out here uh, for right now these are our all of our honey supers that were from this year that I'll have drawn comb and I I just keep
keep them stored out here. Uh, the wax moth won't get these. It's just been honey in those supers. And so they just stay out here until the springtime. But also what I use this area for is to feed bees. And you can see uh, different stuff. As I clean up honey inside the honey house, I um, put it in different containers and let the bees feed, feed on it. And then I also take the wax from cutouts and put it in here. Now this, this wax right here is from when I was crushing and straining that cutout that Charlie and I did, that big old monster cutout. The bees are still trying to get something off of it, but there's really nothing out here. They, they, this has been sitting out here now for three days, so they're, they're just scrounging, saying to get anything. We'll get those bees off of there, and we're gonna get this into the kettle room. Now, because I don't wanna lose any of that wax that's in there from shaking the bees out of here, I'm gonna do that job in this container right here. That way, any wax will fall to the bottom. So we're going to get these bees out of here. And it still smells really great. I was kind of hoping there'd be more wax in this, but any wax is good. All right, got the bees out of here. <laughs> Look at that. Bees are gone. Let's move this over to the honey house. Now here is the rest of the wax that we're going to be rendering down today. These, these blocks right here, these are just ones I've been rendering along as I go. Whenever I get some dead outs, just, or, or cut outs, just render that wax down. So we're going to throw that in there. This is from that last cutout right here. And these are the cappings that were at the bottom of our trays right here. So these three buckets right here, they're gonna be combined with the crush and strain honeycomb. And we're gonna make a batch with that. And then our second batch is going to be all of our wax cappings that were separated out from our honey on a couple of videos ago. And there's no telling how big a block of wax we're going to get out of all this stuff. I don't think it's going to be a whole lot, but every little bit helps when it, when it comes to getting wax for our bees and giving it back to them. Now I want to bring you outside where our kettle is and show you, I got a little setup over there. I want to show you what I've been working on. And this is the workhorse of the wax rendering operation. It's a 30 gallon kitchen kettle, commercial kitchen kettle, made by Vulcan. And this kettle, along with the other one that's inside of the honey house, these were at one time in the monk's kitchen and they used to cook with them. Again, <laughs> during that same flood that I was pulling bees out of that gully back there, during that same flood, um, the kitchen had three feet of water in it as well. And so all of the equipment in there, all the cooking equipment was scrapped. And what they did is they took all of the, the, the equipment and they just brought it out onto the street behind the kitchen and it was left to be picked up and disposed of. So there's, there's really, there's so little that can go wrong with, with something like this. Um, the operations of it, the, the mechanics of it, it's, it's just a gas heater. And it's a double lined, double jacketed um, body right here. And it's just, nothing really can go bad about it. I mean, it's all heavy duty stuff, it's commercial. And it was just on the street to be disposed of. And it just, it just bothered me to no end that they were going to throw this stuff away. And I knew in my heart 
just a little bit of, of work, we could get these things up and running again. And so, <laughs> in, the, in the cover of full daylight, I got the, the pickup truck and I went and I uh, put this kettle as well as the other one onto a trailer and I hauled them over to the maintenance building where this one was originally, where I had this one originally set up before we renovated that building to be part of the caskets. Brought them all over there and I had them refurbished. Cost me about, it wasn't even $300 to have the, the, the electrical stuff that needed to be replaced in here, um, all that stuff done. And 300 bucks, and I got two great kettles. And I really, I didn't have a, a, a clear plan on how I was going to be using these kettles, but I knew that they could be used in our operation. And for that little bit of money that I'd pay to have them brought back to life, it was well worth it. And as it turns out, and this, these things are just a, a, a godsend for me because I now use them to render the wax out here in, in this building and then in the honey house I use it to decrystallize honey. So great, great pieces of equipment um, for, for me to use and for just a fraction of the cost of it, man, we've got it up and running. So before, before I actually start doing the, the rendering part, I have, I have gone through so many different changes uh, in, in the way I, I render wax. There, I never saw videos, never saw anybody doing videos using this type of equipment. I saw videos on, on rendering wax like in your backyard, which is how I used to do it. The five gallon soup pot, soup, uh, pot underneath a propane burner. That's how I used to render my wax. I tried the solar, mat, uh, solar melters and I built one. It worked okay, but not to my satisfaction it didn't. And to be able to do all the work that I'd want to do, it just wasn't gonna be large enough or quick enough for me. And, and so I, I had dreams and plans for this thing. So initially, when I started doing this, I would take all of my old brood comb, cut comb, whatever, whatever comb that I had, dead outs, cut outs, and I would just throw it into the kettle. I would throw it all in the kettle. I'd add water to the kettle, throw all that comb in there, all that dirty, nasty comb, and melt it down. When you melt it down, all the cocoons that are in that comb, all that stuff floats up to the top. And I've always thought of ways of how to, to clean that stuff out as best I can before it would get into my buckets. So initially, <laughs> I, was, I was using, and I'm sure everybody's using, the painter bags, put the, the comb in the painter bags and try to catch it all in there. It, it worked, it, it worked, it, it worked pretty good. And, but the, the, to get the wax out of all this stuff, it's it, it just too slow, too messy, it just wasn't for me. So I said, there's got to be a different way. So the next thing I tried <laughs> was using this little crawfish scooper where I would take and scoop all of the cocoons and nasty stuff off of the top of the water that's floating, all this stuff it's floating on, and, and throw it into a tray and let it, let it clean off at least like that. And then I said, you know, the crawfish cooker, the stirrer, it just, it just really isn't fast enough. So then, <laughs> that's right, I went to the, the deep fry basket and I would dip this thing inside of the, the kettle and scoop out a ton of cocoons and then go over to my, well, let me show you the setup. Let me move the camera, I'll show you that. I'd go over to my setup, which was a big, big aluminum tray, and it had a, another tray set inside of it that was full of holes. And then I would take screen, and I'd put that on the bottom of the tray, and take all the cocoons and stuff 
and just come over here and boom, knock it into the into the tray. Talk about messy and it just it worked, but I had so much I was losing so much wax in the the cocoons and, and, and the the trays. It it just there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. So then. I came up with the ingenious idea of what I'll do is I'll make a big net and put that in the bottom of the kettle and that would then I could open up the gate and it would just trap all of the all of the debris in there and that really did work it, it worked pretty good it was to that point it was the best best way I done had done it and, and then I finally came up, I, I believe actually somebody may have suggested it to me um, that what I should do is just put a, a filter inside of the gate of the, the kettle. And let me show you what I wound up doing. This is what the inside of our kettle looks like. It's a little dirty right now, but for, for what I'm going to be doing today, this is clean enough is what I... I need to get. And this trough right here, this trough right here, leads to the gate at this point right here where you can open it up and then release all the liquid that's inside of it. So what was suggested is I put some kind of filter strainer at this point right here because if I do that, it doesn't matter what's going on out here. As long as we stop all the trash from coming this way, we accomplish our goal. And so what I came up with is this. Using a piece of eighth inch hardware cloth, I would take it, curl it, and roll it like this. Try to making it as round as I can because what I'm wanting to do is take it and insert it inside of that trough. Let's find out if that's the right size. And I want it to be tight so that we can trap any of the debris from going inside of the opening. And once, once I got the right thickness, all I do is close off one of the ends and bend it over. Now I have this seam in it, and as long as I put that seam, the seam right here, as long as I put that seam down to the bottom, no debris is going to get in it. Now let's go ahead and I'll show you how this thing works inside of our kettle. And with our screen shaped right, our seam on the bottom, all I do is I shove it into that trough and now this will prevent any of my any of the trash from any of the big stuff from filtering through we'll still get some of the finer dirt that stuff will come through and I'm going to show you uh, how effectively this little screen works so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to fill up not fill it up, but put about, I don't know, probably about three or four gallons of water inside of the kettle right now. And we're going we're gonna to light this heater up. That's all the water that I need to do this. You can see our screen, our filter, and the throat down there. 
We'll let this water come to a boil and then we'll add our wax. See where we look like. Well, it's not quite a rolling boil, but I got little bubbles on. That's close enough. Let's go ahead and dump all this stuff in there. Show you what it looks like. There you have it. Sitting in the water, getting ready to melt. All right, I'm gonna set the timer. We're gonna find out just how long it takes to melt this batch of wax. All right, right at 28 minutes. Let's see where we look. Yep, most of it is melted down. I'm gonna stir it up and try to get some of that comb right there that's still floating around that hadn't gotten wet. Get it down there. It's those big chunks of wax. Oh, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. And this stuff will just be gone in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat right now. We don't need that anymore. Right. That's perfect. Alright, let's open up our gate. and let this water wax come on out. This is what the inside of the kettle looks like after most of that water and wax have been drained out. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving the trash, the debris from around my strainer to allow the liquid to pass through it because it's, it's just getting so clogged up that it won't allow the liquid to pass through. So we're going to just take a break and let this stuff work its way through and find out how much debris we have in our kettle. Alright, so I get kind of impatient. I've screened a lot of that stuff away. I'm going to pull our filter out let most of that liquid come out I'm going to let the strainer on the outside of the bucket catch most of that stuff that's going to come out but there's a lot of wax still in here and because our kettle stays warm for so long that wax will have a time to travel through all that stuff and out into the bucket outside. And it, it may take an hour or so for all that to happen, but I'm going to let all that stuff happen before we get into our next batch. All right, let's pull this thing completely out now. And I'm trying to still keep the stuff in there, but let the liquid come out. If I had more patience, <laughs> it would all drain out eventually. But there's so much wax still trapped in here, and I want to capture as much of it as possible. So I do it as quickly as I can. But the more liquid that passes through all that trash, the more the trash stabilizes and it won't pass through into our outside filter. We're going to wait a little while and let it harden up and then I'll remove that internal filter. It's only been 
not even 10 minutes. And now look how much drier that slush looks like. But there's still a lot of wax in there. May not seem like it, but there is. And for that reason, that's why the drip is real slow. But like I said, it'll stay warm at least for, I don't know, half an hour or so. And it'll keep on dripping out of there. And I'll show you what it will look like because <laughs> it builds up really cool like a stalagmite. All right, it's 12.30. Been about two hours since we got out of here. And now you can really see how dry this stuff is. So it's really good. It, that Putting that screen inside the trough, that gate right there, really does the best for me, the best method I've, I've, I've come up with. And this is what happens, as you can see, the um, wax right here, as it drips out because it's still, it cools off so much, it just solidifies right on, right on the metal right there. So I'm gonna clean out the kettle, get it all ready, for, set up for our, our next run, and put another bucket down there to catch the next batch of, batch of wax. It's been 10 minutes since I got the water in here, and as you can tell by the steam, and I can hear by the bubbling, and yeah, our water is ready. So this batch, we're going to be dumping in all of our wax cappings into this batch. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Indeed, pretty good. Let me get the camera and show you. That's what it looks like. Now this batch, it's not going to take as long to melt. We shouldn't have as much trash in it, as you can tell. No way near the trash in this one as in the last one. Let's go ahead and pull our plug out a little bit. Get some more of that wax coming through. And almost all the liquid in this kettle right now, it is wax. The water is always the first thing to come out. I do have my screen on the other side to catch any debris that is coming out. But for the most part, since there's so little in there, it's staying right in the kettle. sit there for a little while. And now with that plug out of there, we should get all of our wax now to come out. I put a little bit too much water in the kettle this time. I'm going to have to raise up my strainer right there. Let me go ahead and take care of that. That worked pretty good. Got the strainer lifted up so that the bottom of it is no longer sitting in our wax. Let it drain out and our kettle still can drain out. And there is a bunch of wax still in here so I'm just gonna leave it all sit like this. Let's give it another 15 minutes. I'll close the lid, keep that heat in there. It's pretty much drained out. I still see a little bit more liquid and wax right in that bottom. I'm just going to close this up 
and we're gonna pretty much wrap it up for the day. Here's the bucket that we just now did and this is our first one cooling down nicely and then tomorrow we'll go ahead and knock them out of the bucket and see how much wax we got. So until tomorrow let's get inside here and find out how our wax blocks did cooling off overnight. Oh look how pretty that one is. Oh man. And here's a better example of what happens. Let me see if I can get that bit. There you go. Of as our wax cools and continues to come out of our kettle, it, it just kind of like solidifies onto the gate right there. It didn't make a really good stalactite this time, stalagmite, but uh, you can see it just, the wax just keeps dripping out from the inside of the tank and then drips outside and then it cools and so it never really reaches the bucket. But this is what happens. This is our wax from all of our cappings and this is the block from all that cut comb, all that comb that I had. And you notice the darker color of this one as opposed to that one. So here's the big question. Let's get outside right now and empty these two buckets and find out just how big a block of wax we have. I can tell you, <laughs> this one right here, this is not going to be any difficult to get this one out of the bucket. But this one, oh my gosh, there's not even a crack around it. So this one is going to pose a lot of trouble getting that one out. But this one, since it's going to be so easy, let's just dump this one out real quick and find out how that block of wax is going to look. There it is. Ooh. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. That is, and it smells beautiful. All right, I'm gonna scrape all this off the bottom. There you go. That is nice. Golly, wish y'all could smell that beautiful smell. All right. <laughs> It's a, I'm going to struggle now to try to get this one out of here. Oh yeah, I got it to move that time. There you go. Let's see if it'll come out now. There you go. Woo! Wow. <laughs> now that's a beauty one right there. This is all from our cappings. All from our cappings. Look at that. All right, let me clean this off and I'll show you what we got. And here is the finished product. And you know how I said how good this stuff smells. If it's got the bees on it right now, you can, you can believe that it smells good. It smells so good that it's attracting the bees to it because it's even right here. I'm outside. It's got this whole area smelling like wax, and so the bees are coming to it. So they, they, both these blocks are really nice wax. Of course, I'm always partial to the to the blocks that the cappings make because the color is so much lighter than the uh, one that comes from brood. It, it's just sometimes I, I, this one. I don't know why it's so dark. Usually it's a lot yellower, but it's, it's not. It doesn't matter. It's still going to work really good when I go to put this on our foundation for our, in the springtime. But it's really, really good. So that's, that's it. 
I mean, that's not bad for all that wax to get these two really nice blocks of wax. Now, what I want to do, actually, what, it, the, what I'm going to do is was suggested to me by one of the, my longtime viewers, Don Bearden. Now, almost anybody who has a YouTube channel on bees, Don watches it. So it's not like Don is watching only my channel. He watches everybody's. If you go to anybody's bee channel, I can assure you that Don has seen the video and left a, a comment on it. And Don, Don left a great suggestion. He said, Jeff, why don't you make a contest and let the people guess as to the amounts the weights of the blocks of wax that, that you did. And so that's what I want to do. I want to I want to ask if you want to guess at the, the combined weight of both these blocks um, and put that guess inside of your comment, include that with your comment, and the person who is closest to the exact weight, so that's pounds and ounces going to the to the decimal point. Um, uh, person close to that is going to win honey from me. Uh, and not only are we going to get some honey, but I'm also going to throw in a special surprise prize in there as well. So the person who guesses closest to the combined weight of both these blocks is going to win some of our Abbey honey. Now, here you go. This is the, the size of it. And I'm telling you, this is, this is a heavy block right here. And here is, I don't want it to roll away. Here is the other block right, right here. Not quite as thick, but every bit is round. And look, right here, let me zoom in on that. You see what that is? That's a love bug. So today is March 23rd, no March, August 23rd. And every time I see the love bugs start emerging, that tells us that a nectar flow is about to, to commence. So I don't know whether it's gonna be a really strong one. I, I don't think it is. The, I mean, September is when our goldenrod starts blooming. So I assume these are the ushers of the goldenrod bloom. That's what my guess is going to be. But regardless of, of anything, the bees are going to be grateful for, for any nectar that's, that's coming in. So send in your guess for the combined weight of these two blocks of wax. And the one nearest to that guess, they will win a prize from Mr. Red. So, that's all I got for you in this one. So, thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Red, I'm out of here until the next video. See ya.